Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's simply the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor by Spotify has everything you need all in one place. So let me explain. Now, Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your own cell phone or your own computer. Now, I've been using and loving Anchor by Spotify for two years now. And don't forget that Anchor will go ahead and distribute your podcast on so many listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so many, many more. Now, I think it's simply everything you need to make your own podcast all in one place. And don't forget, Anchor is totally free. So why don't you go ahead and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear all of your podcasts. Hey guys, welcome back to all my listeners. And if it's your first time finding me, thank you so much. Come on in, you guys. This is episode 15 of season seven. Today is Wednesday, December 15th, 2022. My name is Sonal Patel, and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. So, all right, you guys, I just got back from an incredible, simply incredible three days in Savannah, Georgia, a city that I have never been to. was just such a quaint and cute southern town filled with so much beauty. The architecture was divine. There was so much art to see. There was great food. And of course, it was the host to the 14th annual NamUs conference for auditing and compliance. So it's so very important, you guys, to stay current as a certified auditor. And when you're in the compliance space of healthcare, this is an incredible organizational body that I'm a proud member of. They really put on an outstanding conference of elevated education. And it also didn't hurt, right, to catch up and spend some really good quality time with my friends and colleagues. And I most certainly, most definitely feel armed and ready for everything that 2023 has in store for auditing, evaluation, and management services with the new 2021 and the 2023 revisions to the guidelines that are set forth by the AMA and adopted by CMS for the most part, right? So anyways, you guys, I just wanted to give you the heads up on where I was. And if you ever have a chance to head on down to Savannah, Georgia, it's a cute little town. I could have done so much more, but there was no time. There were hauntings and spooky tours. You that I could have taken, which you know is right up my alley, but I had no time. And um, those tours were late at night at like nine, 10 o'clock for like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh my God. So next time I head down to Savannah, I'm definitely going to do that. But anyways, you guys, all right, let me get unpacking for the day. So today I decided I'm going to do my trusty tip and compliance recommendations on some DME paperwork that's not needed as of January 1st, 2023. And of course, it is the second Wednesday of the month, so that means I'm going to be getting into the newsworthy OIG work plan updates for November 2022. And this was a big month. There's a lot of OIG work plan updates. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and round out today's episode with a remarkable quote on purpose and impact by Ralph Marston. If you guys have checked me out on LinkedIn, you know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and our valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help all of your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a, please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and my recommendations based on my over 12 years of experience in front office, in back end 
in coding and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, in compliance and in auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So let's get into newsworthy. It's the second Wednesday of the month. So that means that's right. Even in season seven, I keep going over the month's OIG work plan updates. And this was a big month. You guys, we had 11 OIG work plan updates for the month of November. So let's get into it. The first OIG work plan update for November, 2022 is titled NIH grant closeout process. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. The National Institutes of Health, that's our NIH, invests approximately $41.7 billion annually in medical research and is the largest federal funding source for health research and development. Prior OIG work identified issues regarding NIH's grant post-award closeout processes. A closeout of an award is the process by which NIH determines that all applicable administrative actions and all required work under an award have been completed by the recipient and the NIH. And this is located in 45 CFR section 75.381. The OIG will determine whether NIH closed its grants in accordance with federal requirements and departmental guidance. They will also determine which actions the NIH took to address noncompliance with closeout requirements. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the second OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled States Oversight of Residential Facilities to Protect Children from Maltreatment. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. States monitor and license federally funded residential facilities for children, but policymakers and the media have reported on incidents of child abuse and neglect, collectively referred to as maltreatment, that raise concerns about the effectiveness of states' oversight efforts to protect children in these settings. The OIG will interview state child welfare and licensing agencies to assess how they monitor and address reports of maltreatment in child residential facilities. Identification of gaps in state oversight of residential facilities for children and potential promising practices, for example, innovative policies or activities that could help address maltreatment, could help the administration for children and families and states improve their oversight and better protect the children placed in these facilities. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the third OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Inpatient Rehabilitation Facility Nationwide Audit. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Inpatient Rehabilitation Facilities, or ERFs, provide intensive inpatient rehabilitation therapy for patients who have complex nursing, medical management, and rehabilitation needs that require hospital-level treatment in an inpatient environment. In fiscal year 2021, Medicare paid approximately $8.7 billion for 373,000 ERF stays nationwide. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, that's our CMS, has consistently found high ERF error rates through its Comprehensive Error Rate Testing Program, or CERT program. For an ERF claim to be considered reasonable and necessary, it must meet certain coverage and documentation requirements. The OIG issued a nationwide audit of ERF claims in September 2018, titled, Many Inpatient Rehabilitation Facility Stays Did Not Meet Medicare Coverage and Documentation Requirements. And this report was titled also A-01-15-0050. That found that medical record documentation for 175 of 220 sampled ERF stays did not support that the ERF care was reasonable and necessary in accordance with Medicare requirements. OIG's hospital compliance audits 
also frequently include ERF claims and have similarly found high error rates. In response to these findings, ERF stakeholders have stated that Medicare audit contractors and OIG have misconstrued the ERF coverage regulations. To better understand which claims ERFs believe are properly payable by Medicare, OIG needs more information from the ERF stakeholders. OIG plans to determine whether there are areas in which CMS can clarify Medicare ERF claims payment criteria. In addition, they will follow up on recommendations from their prior ERF audit in that report titled A01150050. They believe data and input from ERF stakeholders are critical to identifying any specific areas that might require clarification and will result in more meaningful recommendations and a greater positive impact on the program. This audit will be an independent performance audit in accordance with generally accepted government auditing standards. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now the fourth OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Access to Medications for Opioid Use Disorder at Health Centers. Now this report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Access to Medications for Opioid Use Disorder, or MOUDs, is essential for addressing the opioid epidemic in the United States. However, patients continue to encounter barriers to accessing affordable and quality treatment services. OIG will examine access to MOUDs through health centers funded by the Health Resources and Services Administration, also known as HRSA. Now, health centers play a pivotal role in expanding access to MOUDs in the primary care setting because they provide high quality and comprehensive care regardless of the patient's ability to pay. HRSA has also awarded funding to health centers to expand access to substance use disorder treatment. This study will provide critical information on expanding MOUD access through HRSA's health center program. They will examine how many health centers provide MOUD services, which types of services they provide, for example, specific medications and behavioral health services, such as counseling, as well as how many patient health centers are treating with MOUDs. They will also examine the factors that may either facilitate or hinder the provision of MOUDs at health centers. This final report is expected in fiscal year 20. 24. Now, the fifth OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Review of Medicare Payments for Trauma Claims. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. There have been concerns about trauma centers improperly billing for trauma team activation that is not medically necessary. In addition, they found some providers have received trauma team activation payments without proper designation or verification. Currently, CMS does not track which providers are designated or verified as trauma centers. OIG will determine the amount of Medicare overpayments and Medicare charges that affect future hospital payments, and OIG will identify providers that are not trauma centers or that build for medically unnecessary trauma team activations. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the sixth OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Reported Impact of Discarded Drug Refunds on Biosimilar Drugs. This report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Section 90004 of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act requires manufacturers of certain single-dose containers or single-use package drugs, including biosimilar biologic products, payable under Medicare Part B to provide a refund for the discarded amounts of such drugs. In addition, Section 90004 of this Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act requires the OIG, after consultation with CMS and the Food and Drug Administration, that's our FDA, to submit a report to Congress on any reported impact that Section 90004 may have on the licensure market entry, market retention, or marketing of biosimilar biologic products.
As such, the OIG will determine the reported impact of discarded drug refunds on licensure, market entry, market retention, or marketing of biosimilar drugs, and submit a report to Congress. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the seventh OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled 2022 Performance Data for the Senior Medicare Patrol Projects. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. This memorandum report presents performance data for the Senior Medicare Patrol Projects, which receive grants from the Administration for Community Living to recruit and train retired professionals and other senior citizens to recognize and report instances or patterns of health care fraud. OIG has collected these performance data since 1997. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the eighth OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Medicare Part B Drug Payments, Impact of Price Substitutions Based on 2021 Average Sales Prices. Now, this report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. When Congress established average sales price, or ASP, as the basis for Medicare Part B drug reimbursements, it also provided a mechanism for monitoring market prices and limiting potentially excessive Medicare payment amounts. The Social Security Act mandates that OIG compare ASPs with average manufacturer prices, or AMPs. If OIG finds that the ASP for a drug exceeds the AMP by 5% in the two previous quarters or in three of the previous four quarters, the Secretary of HHS may substitute the reimbursement amount with a lower calculated rate. Over the past decade, OIG has produced annual reports aggregating the results of mandated quarterly ASP to AMP comparisons. This annual report will quantify the savings to Medicare and its beneficiaries that are a direct result of CMS's price substitution policy based on 2021 ASPs and may offer recommendations for Medicare to achieve additional savings. This final report is expected in fiscal year 20. 23. Now, the ninth OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Comparison of Average Sales Prices and Average Manufacturer Prices. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. When Congress established average sales price, ASP, as the basis for Medicare Part B drug reimbursement, it also provided a mechanism for monitoring market prices and limiting potentially excessive Medicare payment amounts. The Social Security Act mandates that the OIG compare ASPs with the average manufacturer prices, AMPs. If OIG finds that the ASP for a drug exceeds the AMP by 5% in the two previous quarters or three of the previous four quarters, the Secretary of HHS may substitute the reimbursement amount with a lower calculated rate. These quarterly memos summarize the results of OIG's comparison analysis based on ASP and AMP data. The memo specifically reports the number of drugs OIG identified that met the criteria for substitution of a lower reimbursement amount. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the 10th OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Ensuring Dual Eligible Beneficiaries Access to Drugs Under Part D, Mandatory Review. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Improving safety, quality, and transparency of Medicaid nursing facility care is a top priority to ensure that seniors, people with disabilities, and others living in nursing homes receive reliable, high-quality care. States have broad flexibility when establishing Medicaid base and supplemental payments to provide adequate, performance-driven nursing facility rates. OIG will judgmentally select three facilities in selected states, one each from the following facility types, for-profit, not-for-profit, and governmental. 
to determine what percentage of Medicaid nursing facility revenue is being expended on direct patient care. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. Now, the 11th, the final OIG work plan update for November 2022 is titled Audit of Medicaid Nursing Facility Use of Funds Related to Direct Patient Care. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Improving safety, quality, and transparency of Medicaid nursing facility care is a top priority to ensure that seniors, people with disabilities, and others living in nursing homes receive reliable, high-quality care. States have broad flexibility when establishing Medicaid base and supplemental payments to provide adequate, performance-driven nursing facility rates. OIG will judgmentally select three facilities in selected states, one each from the following facility types, for-profit, not-for-profit, and governmental, to determine what percentage of Medicaid nursing facility revenue is being expended on direct patient care. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. All right. Well, in my opinion, it's concerning to learn about the work plan item on trauma payments for Medicare claims. They have never been reviewed. And OIG is claiming a possibility of not medically necessary payments have been made. Remember, it said, quote, currently CMS does not track which providers are designated or verified as trauma centers. So the onus there is on CMS, right? There's never been a tracking mechanism, but now they're talking about potential overpayments on patients that come in with trauma. So that raised a little red flag in my mind because capturing trauma activation on claims forms requires trauma criteria to have been met. In fact, there has been concern over the years that many trauma centers or hospitals are underreporting trauma and intensive care on hospital UB04 claim forms with the revenue code 208 for trauma, as well as HCPCS code G0390 for trauma response team associated with hospital critical care service. Or when applicable, there's a revenue code 680 for trauma response through 684 revenue code for level four trauma or as equivalent to your level of trauma certification for your facility. Anyway, so I have lots of thoughts going on with this particular work plan item, and I most definitely look forward to reading the final report in 2024, because I have lots of red flags, lots of questions in my mind. So I really want to dig into their report in 2024. So in my opinion, I always pass this detailed information on to providers who need it to review their coding and billing practices or overarching compliance programs. I think these reports with findings are always most interesting and informative, and I always look forward to analyzing them in the years ahead. It's also important for my listeners to pay attention to these monthly OIG work plan updates to see how they may impact you, your provider, or your health system. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So in today's compliance tip, I wanted to dive into a timely reminder on saying bye-bye to DME paperwork. Okay, not all of the paperwork, but remember, I did alert my audience to this issue back in season six, but flash forward, the time is coming up. Now, since I discuss so much DME POS on my podcast, right, that's durable medical equipment, prosthetics, orthotics, and supplies, I thought it was some very good news that some paperwork is being eliminated from certain DME supplies, and therefore CMS is trying to reduce some burden. Thank goodness. Now, effective January 1, 2023, that's just in a couple weeks, CMS is going to be discontinuing those certificates of medical necessity, those CMN forms, as well as the DME information forms, those DIFs. Now, they make things pretty clear in an MLN Matters number SE22002. And it says, quote, 
for services on or after January 1, 2023, don't submit CMN or DIF forms or their electronic claim data elements with the claims or we will reject your claims and return them to you, end quote. Originally, CMS required the CMN and DIF forms to help document medical necessity and other coverage criteria for selected DME. But suppliers got a signed CMN from the treating physician, or they created and signed a DIF to submit with the claim. Now, information from these forms is actually now available either on the claim or in the medical record. So they found that to be redundant, right? So that's why they're eliminating the necessity for sending in those two forms as well, CMNs and DIFs. So remember, please take action and update your internal processes before January 1, 2023. And finally, I focus season seven spark on purpose and impact. I want this seventh season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for purpose and impact in all we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in spark is from Ralph Marston. Greatness comes from living with purpose and passion. Absolutely true, right? I think this is an amazing quote that reminds us to live life with both passion and purpose. I think this quote reminds us that we all have passions that can be more. They can serve as our purpose. This quote inspires us to even fiddle with those passions to become our greater purpose. I think this quote reminds us that we should acknowledge our passions can change and evolve over the years. I think this quote reminds us then that our purpose can also be layered and multidimensional. I think this quote enables us to leave our own legacy of impact behind. I'm happy Ralph Marston's spark still burns brightly in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Now, in my last thoughts for the day, you guys, Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa are just a few weeks away. And I hope everyone's made their travel plans and I've started shopping. I know there's some difficult people on our shopping lists every year, but get to it and start shopping or making. You can go ahead and be creative and make those handmade gifts and just get excited, right? That feeling of giving and spending quality time and maybe some baking, right? Gets everybody warm and cozy. I know every year I fantasize about boiling those apples and oranges and cranberries and sticks of cinnamon and little balls of cloves on my stovetop, but I don't ever actually get down to it. I just light beautiful red candles that do the trick a little bit faster. But um, if anybody has a good recipe for doing that mold cider on the stovetop, that would be great. I hear people do that with a bottle of red wine in there as well. Um, I'm always afraid that that could ignite a fire, but you know, that's just a little fear that I have, but I think that whole house would smell delightful if you, you know, boiled a pot full of oranges and apples and all of those warming spices. So that just sounds so good to me. And I can't wait to start wrapping the presents as well. I love to take photographs of the tree or the decorations and then all the beautiful colored wrapping paper as well. I mean, I should be beyond this by now. Um, I'm all grown up, but I feel just the beauty of Christmas. Um, is bar none, right? From the colors and the scents and the sounds are just wonderful. And I wish we could capture that feeling throughout the year. So hope you guys love the holidays as much as me. I know I was spending some time when I got back from Savannah making my Christmas playlist, music playlist on Spotify, right? I try and update my Christmas um, music list year after year. So the latest I put on my 
playlist on Spotify is by Andrea Bocelli and Pavarotti. So I love some really deep, really classic Italians singing on my Christmas podcast. So I love that. And of course, I also went back to my younger years, childhood. Do you guys remember Band-Aid? Band-Aid came out with that amazing anthem in 1984 called Do They Know It's Christmas. It is the best. Go back and find it on Spotify. It is so good to hear all of those older artists that I grew up with singing that famous Band-Aid anthem for Do They Know It's Christmas. Oh, it's just so good. Anyway, you guys, I hope you all have an amazing, brilliant week ahead of you. And I hope you're all getting ready for the holidays as well. Now, thank you so much once again for listening in on today's episode, and I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.